first wife was still a Catholic and she wouldn't come to my church. I walked up in the church and this woman walked up to me, God told me you're my husband. I said, better go tell my wife. Because, <laughs> you know, he didn't tell me. And first of all, the Bible says, a man who finds a good thing. Ladies, you choose the man finds. Amen. So if you found him, your marriage is ready to fail. Mm -hmm. Because you're out of order. And that's why the brother sit back because he didn't have to hunt. <laughs> See, as soon as you found him, he's just sitting back and relaxed. I got this one. I don't know. I to do nothing but watch video games and sit back. But if he found you, he's going to work. He's going to work for you. Then you choose him. Amen. I want to get you heavy on that. All right. All right. Then the other thing the world tells you is be ashamed of Jesus Christ. How many of you know they tell you be ashamed of Jesus Christ? One of the most shameful things I ever hear in the body of Christ. And it's not even those who are uh, so-called not born again. They think they're born again. They go, they call him the Son of God. They are ashamed of Jesus' purity to men. How many told you to be ashamed of Christ? He wasn't nothing but a prophet or a teacher. He was all those things. But he's also God who walked the earth. And I don't care if you don't know no Bible. If you know that much, tell that person. I may not know my Bible, but I know he's God. That's all as much Bible you need to know. Hey, look, I ain't going to debate with you about whether angels flew or whether the demon fell down and all that. No, I know Jesus is God in my heart. That's all that matters. Amen? Amen. He rose from the dead and he is God. Did Buddha raise from the dead? <coughs> Did Confucius raise from the dead? Did Allah raise from the dead? Did Muhammad raise from the dead? We can go find their bones. Where's Jesus' bones at? Nobody know because he ain't dead. He's alive. Amen. Then they would tell you this. Reject the Bible as foolishness. Reject the Bible as foolishness. Now, i got to get on our black folk a little bit here. Because we were always told it was the white man's book. I'm sorry, brothers. This is not the white man's book. Amen? But that was the excuse because a lot of religion, well, his genealogy is say, focus on you just being black. Focus on you just being white, anglo saxon Protestant. Focus on you just being a Jew. Focus on you just being Irish. When you come to the body of Christ, none of that matters. Amen. None of that matters. Okay? They would tell you it's the white man's book, but it was written in the Middle East, so how could that be? Well, the Bible was written by a man. The Bible was written by a man. Was the Bible written by men? It was inspired by God. There you go, my brother. Yes, it was. The scripture said, God breathed it out. And man, by the move of the Holy Ghost, wrote it. Amen. Amen. We're going to hit some more of this in a minute. <laughs> then it tells you this. The world will tell you this. Conform to the world's standards by doing these things. It would say, do all these things. You ready? Number one, they would tell you, Agree with abortion. Uh oh, I'm going to touch something. Go to Psalms 39. I mean 139. Go to Psalms 30, 139. Psalms 139. Now, I'm going to tell you this, ladies. This is not beating you up. And don't you, I truly believe no Christian should be protesting in front of abortion centers. I do not believe God told them to do that. Amen? Now, do I agree with abortion? No, I don't. But God don't need your help to deal with those who are doing it. And watch this, ladies. If you have done that, he's forgiven you. Don't let nobody send you to hell because you had an abortion. Amen. I need to say that again. Don't let nobody or no man even talk you into doing it. Don't let nobody send you to hell because you had an abortion. Amen. Amen? Because the scripture don't say that. It says God will forgive you. But watch this. But don't ever do it. But if you did do that, he forgives you. Matter of fact, most of the people that the trend, the trend today is tattoos and piercings. How many of you got a tattoo? How many of you got a piercing? Old Testament said you belong in hell. <laughs> but guess what? God's grace said, no, you don't. Amen. God's loving kindness says, no, you don't. <clears throat> now, you got those tats before you got born again, you clean. Now, if you continue to get them after you're born again, then I might have to question that a little bit. Because you're not supposed to mark yourself or have tests. But if you already got them, welcome to the body, man. Eh? Nobody sent you to hell over piercing. I'm still fighting. You know, I, I kind of like them, but I can't mark myself. I'm going to be hurt. Piercing up the ears, sir. 
Well, where are we going? Psalms 139. That's what I'm talking about, a portion, right? Yeah. Psalms 139. Everything is in the Word of God, believe me. Psalms 139, and let's look at verse 13 15. And it says, For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me and where? My mother's womb. So God already knew you even when you were in your mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelously are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance, there it is right there. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrote in the lowest parts of the earth. So mm. God already knew you. Mm. Even while you were in your mother's womb. Amen. Amen. But if you had done that, don't let nobody do that. Say, God, forgive me and move on with a whole heart. Amen? Amen. And uh, don't let no man talk you into that. Amen. You know? Yeah. Talking about, I'll pay for it, baby. He just don't want to pay for it. Make that man pay for those 18 years. Amen. 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 He wanted to have the two minutes of fun, but he had the 18 years of fun. Amen. 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 child support. I'm telling you. You know, my daddy never, you know, when I was growing up, he only had to pay a dollar a day. Seven dollars a week. <laughs> yeah, a dollar a day. And my parents and my mom used to argue with him over that. Now we're talking in the 60s and 70s. But the other thing I found out, he had 25, he had 24 more of us. Like, what? That, that, that little dollar was hard on him. All right, let's keep going. The world will tell you also to conform to this. Premarital sex. Try it before you buy it. Ooh, ooh. Go to Hebrews. Chapter 13. Hebrews 13. The world says it's okay to have premarital sex. Being a Christian, it is not okay. Amen? Hebrews. Hebrews 13. If you ladies only understood how much power y'all have concerning this area, but because God has put his essence in you, do y'all know how God put his essence in you? See, a man ain't complete until he gets married. Then we become full in God because we have a health me called a what? But what is she? I like to give you my revelation on it. It's like this. God let Adam see all that stuff as he made up the head. He let him name all the animals out in the field. And as he began to see these animals interact with one another, God said man should not be alone. But he also put him to sleep so he couldn't interfere with his great creation. And what was his great creation? So he put him to sleep. And when he put him to sleep, this is one of the few times you've seen God get off the throne. He put him to sleep, opened him up, and took the thing out of him called a rib. And what does the rib protect? It protects our hearts. It protects our lungs. It protects all our vital organs. So women was made from the thing that protects everything that's vital inside of a man. So when God opened her up, see, we believe in the laying on the hands. When I lay my hands on you, whether negatively or positive, I impart something into you. All right. Whether it be my spirit or whatever. So when I touch you, I put my spirit on you. That's why even the world says everybody you slept with, you know, you take it to your next man. Hello. You carry the people which is called soul type. So when God touched the rib, he put his essence in that rib. Amen. And he made woman. And what is God's essence? The Bible says God is a spirit, right? And the Bible says God is love. So when he touched that rib, he put his love in you. That's why y'all put up with our junk. Because y'all got so much love in you.
I'll be like, oh, thank God, God, I love you, God. Amen. But he put his essence in you, ladies. I can't understand how women can walk the street for their men. I don't understand that. That's the love of God in you that can make you love that man enough for you to sell your body for him and take him the money. That's that. I'm selling my body. I'm keeping my money. Now, when God said God gave a specific thing, now, kids, y'all need to get this one. 
nothing. That means take a stick and bend his butt over and hit him on his butt. Pow! Whip! But you have no business across the chest, arms, face, all that. I will have your butt locked up. But the Bible says clearly, take the rod to the back of that baby. So we need to get back into whipping your butt. Amen. Then it says, the world says conform to homosexuality. It tells them now we got homosexuals getting married again. I'm not one of those people who protest against homosexuality. Homosexuality. I don't protest against gay folk. I don't speak against homosexuals. I tell them they're wrong. The Bible says it's an abomination. But guess what? They just as much as a sinner as we were. Amen. Amen. They need to have the grace of God in their life too. Amen. Ain't no difference between you as a fornicator and them as a homosexual. Amen. Hello. <laughs> it's your way. Ain't no difference between you masturbating and them sleeping with a man.
confusion and every evil word. Every time you get wrapped up in, in anything outside of God, sexual sin, you are writing confusion in your life. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, strike means you're always arguing in the way. That's all. You're arguing over nothing. You're arguing over nothing. What time you get in? You know, I've been ringing your cell phone 45 times. How come you ain't answering? <laughs> it rang four times, and now when I tried to call you back, it went straight to the answering service. Why you turn it off? <laughs> This Bible went with me. That's why I brought it tonight, because it's my Warren Bible. But when I finally went into a rehab for Teen Challenge, I wanted to teach my brothers, my black messiahs, and we want to teach them the Bible for everybody is black. But I said, I got no problem because everybody in this Bible is black. I said, something wrong. I know everybody in the Bible is black. All right. Matter of fact, I done found out most of what we call black ain't even in me. They were called by their region. But I get up there and I said, cool, brothers, I want to teach our word. When I began to have Bible studies and teach the word, the only ones who would show up to my Bible studies were the white guys and the Spanish guys. My black brothers hated me. They were envious against me. They talked about me. And they tried to set me up. My black brothers. Then I said, wait, I got to take a new picture on this. And God said, see, I just show you to get that prejudice out of your heart. Because the only thing that matters in color in the Bible is red. The blood of Jesus Christ. If the blood, everybody, if I cut you, no matter what color you are, you will bleed red. So I have to love you. So God delivered my heart from that. You need to get your heart delivered from that. That's why you can't even be present against their sexuality. One of my friends told me, he had ministered to me, and I was watching the Predator program. Y'all ever see those where the guys went in there trying to get through the little girls? And I said, man, he deserved hell. My boy said, now see, you just got finished preaching about how they keep putting the crackhead name on you knowing you're living right. You got more grace for the crackhead, the homosexual, the, the uh, you know, the mentally ill and all that. He said, but don't you know God's grace also goes to the murderer and to the pedophile? And I said, oh my God, he's right. What if that pedophile decides to straighten up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you still going to love him? Are you still going to love her? Are you still going to love the person who murdered your children? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I have to struggle with that. But God requires it. Even when I see people on TV who go to the murderer and forgive them for killing their child, I'm like, what? You know, I'll be ready to be killed. But that's where they're hiding. You gotta have a heart of forgiveness. So, if, so I had to come to me and say, forget the world's way. The world says I need to hate you because of that. Because even if you went to jail, we have you marked. You won't get hit. They didn't put you in solitary. We get you. You wanna meet the group? But let's see what God says about racism. Galatians chapter 3, look at verse 28 and 29. What does he say about that? 28 and 29, he said, There is neither Jew nor Greek, right? Mm -hmm. There is neither bond nor free. Uh -huh. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in who? Christ Jesus. Amen. So therefore, it don't matter. If you accept Jesus. Christ, Lord and Savior, you stop just being a Jew or a Greek or whatever. You are my brother and my sister in Christ Jesus. And the only thing that the same thing that covers and protects you is called the blood of Jesus and that protects me too. Amen. So I need to love you. Amen. Amen. So if you got a problem with that, just give it over to God and ask God to help you. Like I did. I don't have a hateful racism bone in my body. 
But I was once like that because I was trained to be like that. How many of you?